The last thought came from a telephone call that I had with a friend, a friend of high rank in the United States military. After spending most of his military career in South America and the Caribbean, he was later deployed to a post in South Asia, and after several months of deployment, he spoke. He said that he had always considered the challenges of the Caribbean and Latin America nearly insurmountable until experiencing the new position focused on South Asia and the Middle East. His realization of how much commonality the United States, Latin America, and the Caribbean share, he said, should make this butter. It is my hope that Bolivia and the United States will take the lead in a new era of diplomacy and human rights for that which is our shared human interest, that Cuba will follow with the release of Alan Gross, and that the United States will refocus its diplomatic consideration on the Cuban Five without regard for fundamentalist opposition within political constituencies. Bolivia has a rare opportunity to trigger the movement of a new day with a discussion of human rights and a discussion without borders. And thank you very much for that certainly very eloquent, but also very bold statement. Not only did you lay out all of the very real and tangible efforts that you have made and others have made, uh, encouraging, asking, petitioning, but now you, I believe you have given means to a very positive outcome with the Dakar Rally uh, recommendation. I can tell you that we will uh, circulate a letter uh, pursuant to your recommendation. Uh, to the sponsors and ask that they again not uh, allow this this very important rally this great uh, economic boom uh, to occur within Bolivia uh, until Jacob is free. So I think uh, this could be a good thing. It ought to be. Uh, the persuasion has years to date now, almost two years, has not worked. So I think you you bring to the table an enormous next step. And for that, I, and I believe all of us are very grateful for that recommendation. So, uh, thank you so much for that. You know, it doesn't explore another issue, you know, how any non bolivian any Bolivian uh, business investor could have any confidence that doing business in Bolivia might not make them the next Jacob Oster. Uh It is a very real threat uh, to them, and uh, so I think you, you lay out a course of action uh, that we will follow up on. And I do thank you for that. Without leverage, you know, jawboning and recommendations, even friendships, only go so far. So, thank you for that. Um, if you wanted to elaborate any further on, on the idea, but we will circulate a letter. I do hope it will be bipartisan. I know that. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I think that will be very, very effective. Let's get us on record. But let me just ask you, uh, you know, you talk about the judicial system, and, I, and I'm glad you bring a very, very sharp focus there. Uh, in my first press conference with the Bolivian press last June, uh, I had known of so many other cases that were just like Jacob's, but not American, and said that, look at Jacob as a means to an end in getting the judicial system uh, up to world class standards, international standards of fundamental human rights due to process rights, and as you said, Lared, you know, the idea that this, this, this nefarious organization, this network, continues to not only hurt Jacob, but it hurts Bolivian people. And one of the points I made to the Bolivian press was that we stand in solidarity with the press in Bolivia, just as we do with Jacob. And so join us in trying to push for reform, uh, and I think your point was very well taken on that one as well. No one should be behind bars ever anywhere uh, who is innocent. You know, we don't, we're not having hearings about Americans who are committing crimes. We're having hearings in promoting uh, innocent Americans, or anyone else for that matter, uh, who are being uh, prosecuted by justice. So I think you point on that as well. Uh, just one question and any comment that you might want to make. We have tried to get the United Nations to do more, other organizations. Uh, we know that Dennis Rasica is there. I've met with him. Uh, Maybe Velasquez and I have met with him. Uh, but we know that the UN itself is under pressure uh, and runs a risk and has a certain fear that its own personnel might be retaliated against. But it seems to me that in New York, the Human Rights Council ought to be taking up Jacob's case uh, uh, and, and, and the US should be promoting that as well. Because 
when other levers don't work, the international uh, organizations certainly provide a potential remedy. So if you wanted to speak to that. Yeah, well, I think there, that there are several institutions and, and government organizations who uh, may be able to uh, contribute their good offices and they, and they influence uh, their Bolivia is, is a very poor country, as we know, and there are, there is, it, it does uh, demand an enormous amount of uh, economic support in various sectors. So uh, I think that, that there is that. At the same time, I think this this hearing today a little bit under a little simply because there is um, such a perspective shift culturally that when they are challenged, especially by um, either citizens or government officials in the United States, there's an inclination towards, um, let's say, self-destructive, to this level of self-destructive defiance. Um, it, 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 in the kind of populism that is typical of the, of the, of the region, um, Leaderships often have to appeal uh, on the basis of that defiance towards the, the, the United States. And I think that, again, you know, that, 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 that in looking forward on these kinds of negotiations in the future, uh, this is really a time as we become increasingly global. I think it makes a lot of sense for us to adjust our, our, our view related to our, our own human rights abuses in this, in this country and also within, within the kind of, any kind of a sort of the, the black and white hold on that, that maintain small small groups dictating the policy of, at, at large and affects the perception of the United States worldwide. There are compromises to be made. There are, uh, you know, I, I brought up the Cuban Five. Clearly there are some within the Cuban Five who are, are, are seemingly guilty of higher offenses than others. But these are the kinds of, of the diplomatic things that, that we really need to start working for the first start with so that we don't have a defiant leadership in, 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 these, in these countries the next time something happens. And, 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 and that would, I think, further empower the State Department to take a more active role. At this point, I think it is fair to say that, uh, despite criticism, the State Department has had, even in the case of Mr. Osbrecher, uh, my experience there is that, that, that they've been very diligent and yet very cautious, and rightly so, because their public position taken against this government uh, is that which quickly can inflame the situation rather than confuse it. Please, thanks. Thank you. Uh, once again, Mr. Fett, thank you very much for your testimony. And I particularly appreciated you, your testimony providing a context, and especially a historical context, in terms of our relationship with Bolivia, the sensitivity of that, the new leadership in the country, and also the precarious position that the president finds himself in. So I wanted to ask you a, a couple of questions along those lines. Um, one, in terms of if you believe that us bolivian relationships partially contribute to Mr. Ostreicher's uh, imprisonment, and then your call for us to do a letter. I, I was speaking with uh, uh, Chairman Smith and said, I'm more than willing to sign on to a letter Maybe that letter actually calls for the companies you talked about to withdraw their involvement unless he's released. On the other hand, the flip side of that is what you were just talking about. Um, I'm happy to do that if you think it would be helpful. On the other hand, I would just be a little concerned that that could inflame things or even perhaps compromise uh, President Morales. And you described him as being you know, genuinely concerned about the situation. And so that begs the question of why couldn't he just order the release? And so is the reason because he's in part receiving the pressure from the red? Is that just, is that you refer to the nice? Yes. Well, this is the you're referring to the criminal network that is negotiated. Right. So, so I guess I'm asking if you do think that's a good idea to, to ask her to be that strong, to withdraw their involvement, which could certainly compromise you know, the economic benefit to the country, uh, would that be helpful or would that be, you know, a contributing factor to employment? I, I think as with anything, uh, there, there, there is a, a pressure. And it, it is my opinion that the threshold is the cross in terms of the incarceration of Jacob Ostrich. Uh Not only to the, to, to the deaths of Mr. Ostrich, but to the Libyan people and the future of this institution of the judicial process. Uh, I think that when I, my, what I was insinuating was not so much that, that, that uh, President Morales was uh, 
cautious related to the, the reaction of the influence of the red, but in particular that in the same way that, that leadership throughout the world are vulnerable to opposition media. Uh, the media is, is, um, is, is a rapid dog there, that, and, and, they, and, and they are largely uh, uh, run by opposition forces and influenced by opposition forces to this democratically elected leader people. So I, I, I by no means am suggesting uh, a, a lack of courage on that, uh, in fact, quite the contrary. But in terms of political strategy, he is he is caught between a rock and a hard place, is, is my perception of this. And that and, and also those ministers, the, the, the good ministers within the judiciary, in that as soon as they stand up and say, you know, they believe the job Jacob Ostriker should be released or he is innocent of these charges, or in fact, as is the case, there is no evidence uh, whatsoever uh, against Mr. Ostriker. Uh, it starts to be rumored that they are representatives of narco traffic. And so within that, if that is going to struggle, but it's never going to be broken until the strategy is based on principle. And the simple principle here is that if there's going to be an enormous amount of money generated in a country that's just doing this, a country where, where human rights is the low-hanging fruit of the, of, of the yearning of the, of the actual leadership and the people, well then, in fact, they're inviting such, such solidarity as, 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 I, as I read it. Uh, that, that these companies do just that and make the decision uh, with the very clear thought that it, it is simply wrong to continue to support it.